Anyone who's a fan of tsunami watching and has watched clouds of videos via YouTube will have noticed after a while that tsunamis take many forms and are not the same wall of water as often portrayed it in disaster movies. The shape of a tsunami is determined by many different factors that interact in different ways and together create the final appearance and behavior of the destructive wave. Today's video will discuss just what types of tsunamis you may encounter. So just sit back and let's get to the new video. Four basic factors determine what kind of tsunami will hit the coast. Let's take a closer look at each factor. Factor 1. What is the source of the tsunami? The most common source is an underwater earthquake on lithospheric plate faults. It is the most common source of tsunamis and generates waves that have a huge range and can maintain their destructive potential for long periods of time through the energy released. Another common source of tsunami is the eruption of an undersea volcano. These waves tend to be very destructive, but they lose energy rapidly as they move across the water surface, partly because submarine volcanoes are usually located in shallow waters where the wave immediately rubs against the bottom. The third most common source is in an underwater or coastal landslide. Such a wave has its deadliest impact in the immediate vicinity of the source, but its energy is lost relatively quickly. So now we have explained what factor 1 is, but as we have already discussed, other factors will influence what the resulting tsunami will be. Let's take a closer look at them. Factor 2. Distance of the tsunami source from the coast. When the source is close to the coast, then such a wave is called a local tsunami. It occurs very close to shore and is associated with underwater and coastal landslides. It is a very dangerous type of tsunami because it appears suddenly and strikes within minutes. People may have no idea about the landslide because its effects are imperceptible on the coast. The most famous example of a local landslide tsunami is the 1958 tsunami in Lituya Bay, Alaska. The tsunami had a run-up of 524 meters, which is about 1724 feet above the surface of the bay. It is the highest recorded tsunami in history. Another well-known example of a local landslide tsunami is the Sulawesi event, about which we also did a separate video. Be sure to watch it then, the link is below the description of this video. If its source is 100 kilometers or more offshore, it is a regional tsunami. These most often occur during underwater earthquakes or after a volcanic eruption. It is the most dangerous type of tsunami because of its tremendous energy and long range, but it takes more time to evacuate compared to a local tsunami. Typical examples of regional tsunamis are the tsunamis that hit Japan in 2011, which mainly affected the island of Honshu and the 2004 tsunami that hit Indonesia and Thailand. If the source of the tsunami is more than 1000 kilometers from the coast, it is then called a distant tsunami. This tsunami is extremely dangerous because the people at a such great distance from the tsunami source have no idea that the earthquake has occurred. A typical example of the 2004 tsunami that hit Sri Lanka, India, the Maldives, and Africa. It loses little energy as it travels through the ocean because it moves in deep water and is almost imperceptible at the surface. Now, we will explain another factor which is whether it is a positive or negative tsunami. Factor 3. Positive or Negative Tsunami a negative tsunami occurs when the lithospheric plate closer to the coastline sinks. In this case, the ocean level lowers several kilometers before the wave arrives. As the wave approaches the shore, the water depression pushed by the wave in front of it sucks out all the water. This type of tsunami was typical of the 2004 tsunami in Thailand, when all the water drained away from the coast and exposed the seabed. This is a very good warning signal that should be taken seriously. Conversely, when the plate rises closer to the coast, a positive tsunami occurs, either as a sudden flood or as several incoming waves, without prior warning. This wave was the primary one in Japan in 2011.
So we know at this point the source of the tsunami, how far it is from the shore, whether it's a positive or negative, and now we just need to find out what the bathymetry of the coastline is where the wave will hit. Let's do that. Factor 4. Bathymetry of the Coastal Waters Bathymetry is the discipline concerned with measuring depth of the sea and the shape of the seabed of the coast. Coastal bathymetry is the key to determining what a tsunami will look and behave like on the coast. Let's now give three illustrative examples of different bathymetry from Japan in 2011. For the Japan tsunami, we know that factor 1 was an undersea earthquake. Factor 2 tells us that it was a regional tsunami, because the source was about 100 kilometers away from the Japanese coast. Factor 3 told us that it was a positive tsunami. And finally, Factor 4, the bathymetric coastline. The ocean is deep in the northern part of Japan, but just off the coast, the bottom slopes steeply and there are relatively large shallow bays open to the sea in this area. We know from videos that when the tsunami reached the shallow here, it created an impressive wall of water, such as in the Kuji or Noda area. This was due to the fact that as the sea is suddenly shallow here, the tsunami's front is pushed upwards and suddenly an impressive and very stable wall of water is formed. So then, it hits the coastline where it breaks and causes a lot of damage. The central part of the east coast has a similar bathymetry, but the coastline consists of numerous narrow bays and rock fjords that extend many kilometers inland. The wave cannot therefore form a wall of water and is gradually forced into the narrow neck of the bay, but it causes a catastrophic flash flood. The tsunami looks like a backward flowing raging river that keeps rising and swallowing everything. It is the most aggressive type of tsunami imaginable, and can wipe entire cities off the map, as we have seen with the cities of Minami Sanriku, Kesenuma and Rikuzen Takata. Bathymetry of the southern part of the coast is characterized by extensive sandbanks that rise tens of miles offshore. This coastal character is typical of the flat areas of Japan. In this case, the wave forms a wall of water many miles offshore due to the shallows. Its survival can be seen from great distance and is heralded by a crashing sound. As the wave continues to rub against the bottom, it slows down considerably, but at the same time increases in horizontal length and hits the coast in several waves, having the character of a foaming aggressive wall of water repeatedly overflowing and reforming. The wave usually penetrates deep inland due to the flat nature of the coastline. Due to the flat nature of the landscape and the large horizontal length of the wave, this type of tsunami has a huge destructive potential many kilometers offshore. Friends, that's it for today's video. If you liked it, click the like button and also subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos in the future. You can also contribute to the development of our work by clicking on the heart below the video and donating any amount. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much and I will look forward to seeing you in the next video.